It's Monday, June 10th, and I'm back from vacations. And this is the video log that takes 30,000 to a million. It's gonna happen for sure. Today, I want to talk about my Beyond Meat short credit spread that I've done. It's just a, a different way to short the stock. Everybody and their mother wants to short the stock, so I'm like, all right, why don't I do something about it? And I'll show you what I did and how that's going to play out. Uh, I'm not going to post any pictures from the vacay. Maybe I'll do it next time because it's too late right now. It takes too much time to transfer all that stuff out. So I'm going to just take you through the account real quick, show you some of the moves that have happened. It's mostly just dividends and stuff like that. One missed opportunity and um, talk about the Beyond trade. All right, so this is the browser here. Um, I've had 17, 17 notifications that I missed out on. Um, this is just the beyond call spread that I've sold. I'll, I'll take you through that in a second. Uh, I've sold some puts against my money for Cameco. Twenty dollars, betting that um, or promising to buy it at ten dollars in a month. Then I've called a call against RSX, which is the Russian market, like a month away. And then. Um, uh, sold Spotify for a little bit of a gain, like 50 bucks. I just didn't want to hold the stock for any any longer, even though it went up over the last couple of days. I've sold out of it, so I'm done with it. I got a bunch of other dividends, and then um, bought six shares of Apple while I was in Bulgaria. That's pretty much the biggest move. Biggest move that I did, and uh, most notable. So the credit spread, right? The reason why I wanted to do this, by the way, it shows empty because I'm making this video at 12 o'clock and the market's ticked over. But the weekly chart looks like this. Um, let me switch over. Okay, I'm at, I am at the browser. <laughs> so the weekly chart, I'm at 4.55% and I'm barely beating the market, which is my goal is to beat the S&P 500. Um, the weekly chart looks like this, 4.25. So I'm beating it by 0.2 which is not too bad. So the big movers for today is really just Apple up $300, EXK down 90, um, Realty, Realty, Realty Income Fund down 17, and then Wheat and Precious Metals down almost 60, uh, UUUU up, Energy Fuels up $36, and everything else is fairly flat. Okay, so the big Trade. Let's look. Let's look at this Beyond Burger, right? Or the Beyond Meat company. So, if we look it up, I want to show you something. Everyone wants to share the stock, by the way. It's you know, it's in a bubble. It's going to correct at some point, and uh, it's it's had some pretty massive gains. Right now, it's sitting at one hundred and sixty-nine dollars. If we pull out just a week earlier, a few days ago, it was sitting at $99 and you think alright well let's experience this big jump here and announce some new products the reason isn't really that important it announced some big products and um, it jumped up but if we zoom out even further you can see that it's not only come down from or come up from 99 it's going from 68 and even further out it IPO'd at $46 alright so it's come up a lot and this isn't like some high super um, advanced technology type of stock. I mean, they just have a patent on how to put a few vegetables together so it tastes like meat with proteins and whatnot. I mean, all right, that's good, but it's not, uh, at least in my opinion anyway, it's not like the internet, they invented the internet or something. Uh, but the valuation is just crazy right now, and um, everybody and their mother knows it, so they want to short it, but there's a problem with shorting the stock, right? So it's very expensive to do so. If you actually go in and, and try to short the stock outright, and you can't do it in Robinhood, but in some other brokers you can, where you actually borrow the stock and sell it, and then you have to pay rent on the stock, basically, in order to um, you know keep the short alive. It's very expensive to do so. And if you want to buy puts, which is another way that you can short the stock in Robinhood, let's go in there and I'll show you um, what I'm talking about here. So trade options for Beyond. If I want to buy a put, 
let's say for next week look how expensive it is I mean it's just absolutely crazy there's no way anyone's doing this right now it cost I mean it cost let's say hundred and sixty dollars it's it cost one thousand three hundred and thirty dollars to buy a putt for a week <laughs> I mean, by by June fourth, not even a week, just a few days. This Friday, it's absolutely insane. I mean, it's so expensive that uh, you know there's a good chance the price doesn't go anywhere, or the bubble keeps bubble. Let's call it a bubble, the or not. The price appreciation keeps going further up for another few days. I mean, that's that's very expensive. So instead of doing all of that right what I decided to do is risk a lot for a small reward for a somewhat probable scenario alright so if we go home here and let's take a look at this trite and uh, see what, what I did there so what I did was a cold credit spread so I sold the 175 call and I bought the 180 call and I have to put up a uh, $500 collateral for that and I'm getting a $115 credit in return so I could lose the $500 or gain 115 and what has to happen is the price of beyond has to stay below 175 by this Friday which I think is a fairly probable scenario considering how overvalued it is right now and uh, a lot of people want to get out because they're getting burned if they're shorting right now but the short quote unquote short squeeze I think is going to last not too long maybe another day or two and um, this the stock price should come down to earth fairly quickly however right now as of right now this trade is going against me um, I'm losing $35 in the trade and the way this is measured is the spread the difference between the two call options all right so maybe you'll be able to see it better if I go into the options screen right here so June 14th selling a call right so you can see I've sold this call right here for um, 995 but I bought the 180 call for 848 so as long as the price stays below 175 then I'll be alright and uh, the reason I buy this is to protect myself but this difference right can get so large that that's why the $500 collateral is there for to make sure that I'm protected against that and I might lose it but I would rather do that than pay, you know, thousands of dollars just to sh just to buy a put on something that's going to expire in a few days anyways. And this is going to expire as well, but at least I know how much I'm losing and I'm willing to lose that for a, uh, a smaller, more realistic gain. All right. Maybe it's not the best way to play this. If you have if you're playing this some other way, let me know what you're doing, but you know, it's obvious that um, it's the most short stock and look, they don't even offer contracts up here <laughs> like this stock is just going up so crazy the contract options contracts haven't even caught up it's like another Tilray type of scenario so anyway um, that's how I'm playing the short and uh, there was a question about how I'm adjusting my portfolio coming into this and what I'm doing here is uh, I'm really regretting the fact that I didn't sold SH I was in vacation I was just doing stuff and I didn't really sell my SH position, which I wanted to do, but I just didn't have to find time for it. And actually, was gonna sell it right here, at the top, and I was uh, up in percentage for for a bit, and I wanted to roll that into cash or some options, but it didn't happen, and now um, I don't feel like doing it anymore because it's come down in price. And SH is of course the inverse of the S&P 500. It's like an S&P 500 short ETF exchange traded fund. So now that I'm down on it, I'm not I'm not so keen about exiting the position. So I'm just gonna stay put 
at this point uh, if we compare if we take a look at the S&P 500 there's been a nice pop here in the last week or two a really nice pop and it's almost come up to the uh, highs basically old time highs um, that, that happened this year and um, we'll see if it keeps going I mean Apple is pretty highly correlated with the market so that's kind of like my bullish case there and uh, Apple is now a really big part of this portfolio I mean if we check it out here I don't know if it says it on the website if it does, I don't know where it says. Oh, it says right here. So it's 39.22% of my <laughs> account right now, which is really large. But it's pretty heavily correlated with the market. And I have a lot of other stuff that's correlated, like the uh, um, these two right here, the dividend funds and all that. It's pretty highly correlated. So if the market goes up, uh, I'm going to go up with it. It seems like the market wants to go up. All right. So... I don't really feel like fighting it. If if it's gonna go up, I'm gonna let it go up. Just there's been some so many bad news um, that should drag the market down, and you know tariffs and uh, economic data and all this stuff, and it just doesn't want to correct. So, and I mean by correct, I mean go down hard. It, it went down a little bit, but it hasn't really had that like thirty. 20 30 percent correction so I don't know I don't want to fight it plus I don't want to ever go below 55 percent long in the market either so um, I'm just gonna let it run see what happens I still have that market short to kind of counterbalance any down moves and I'm actually gonna be looking to exit it uh, unless something drastic happens like the Fed's been so accommodative and I'm sure they're just gonna blow money to the market as soon as they think that something is going wrong and uh, that backstop is really what's giving me the confidence to keep my money long in the market and buy things like Apple because if that wasn't there I don't think the fundamentals of the economy support this kind of valuations for the markets not just you know in the US but globally but since the money the money creating um, banks have so much power right over what's going on with the units <laughs> that stocks are measured in that I prefer to own the stocks rather than the, the units themselves alright anyway that's enough rambling that's the account that's the beyond trade beyond stock beyond meat whatever trade that I've chosen to do it's probably not the best one let me know if you got a better one and um, I'm going to wrap it up right here because it's a thing long enough. All right. So with that said, post some pictures when I can, probably next time. And peace out.